Hi, my name is Gonzalo Amat. I'm uh, the director of photography for The Man in the High Castle. Hi, I'm Todd Lapp, and I'm the chief light technician for Man in the High Castle. It's an alternate history show. Happy birthday, the Nazi world be super uh, stylized and, and rough. We wanted to show that there was power. They have a kind of a very rigid structure um, and, and then just oppression. In, and we wanted to show that visually. And then, you know, same thing Japanese, a little more freedom, but still with a lot of oppression, but there's more hope there because uh, Juliana's uh, world is there. So that's what there's a little more color and the camera moves a little more. We actually took a lot of, a lot of references from stills and paintings, especially with anything to do with Juliana, the, the artist Klimt. And we actually kept uh, some books near the DIT station, which one was a art book on Klimt, and another one was Japanese prints from the 15 and 1600s. The whole concept of this show was to make an illusion that there was never any lighting. We always lit the scene and not the actors, if that makes sense. Sometimes there was lights on set, but only augmenting what already existed from predetermined practicals. And the first season, it was a little rougher because we were working with the red camera and then we felt that we always had to do a lot of lighting. But that's why we transitioned to the, to the Alexa, which actually gave us a chance to work with a lot more available light. Funny enough, we kind of discovered the, the look of the show more in the second season just because we're like oh this is so little lighting that we have to do to actually see the sets instead of having to put fill everywhere on season two we switched everything to sky panels on the outside world and what that enabled us to do is cloud movement without color shift The I'm afraid she's indisposed at the moment. You are dismissed. Like uh, Todd was saying, we tried doing that scene almost as a one, like a single shot on the Steadicam, really close to the, to the actor. It's very shallow focus. Also gives you that sense of movement, you know, when you're that close. Even though you don't have a lot of body language, you do have the movement of the background to give you that sense of like she came really fast, you know? And then th that balance of power that we wanted to give this, um, this actress. I like the, sort of the, the progression of being super tight with, uh, again, like point of view, right? You start with the point of view of, of, uh, of this woman and then you shift to the point of view kind of shifts to Helen, kind of came together with the idea of diffusing the um, translate with a net in the middle. And that was something that Todd really kind of um, pushed for in the beginning. And it really makes it look like uh, it's real. In a way, I didn't really shoot it differently. What we see on set was so close to what you see on the final thing. And then we didn't do a lot of color correction in the end. We did a lot, we, we play on color on set. We say, okay, play in color with the camera, play in color with the lights. But we didn't do a lot of like secondary color correction, power windows, very, very little. Because we wanted to have that sort of classic feel. You know? In my opinion, the way that compression works in, in streaming, if you have no information, it just becomes black. If you have a little information, you kind of push the compression to say, okay, there is detail there. So it, it will make an effort to resolve. It's happening. As soon as the machine turns off, uh, uh, Julian arrives, there's this change. So we wanted to go from the regular mechanical to the, so we, you know, introducing that warm color and just really kind of flooded with light. Just the idea of people coming out of the light. And, and then, so we have to have a lot of smoke. It's just a lot of elements there to be able, and we knew that this was going to be kind of a montage um, with music was to try to make it as cinematic as possible, you know? Really trying to make the light tell the story in that moment. Essentially what, what we ended up making is a, a 20 foot high convex mirror that was eight feet wide and 20 foot, foot high. And then we, on the top and bottom, we had a 
crap load of moving lights that all shot into the same focal point. So it created a ball of movement. So you'd see the reflection of energy. So with that tunnel scene and it going to warm, we had never played it warm before. I mean, there was warm elements, but very slight. But Gonzalo really wanted to make it look like a, a sunrise or something that was more more metaphorical and, and something that just offered hope. From there, when the when the tunnel starts, we had a whole bunch of the warm, kind of more of a, of, of, of a traditional, a, a lot of lights. We, I think we were almost up to a million watts there at the end there with, with all the math. What was really cool about that, even just, just watching that, that, that scene, that's all practical. And I mean, all the actors, they, they could react to something, you know, and that, and that was re what was really important from a lighting de design is to, to create all these practical sets and practical environments that the actors could really just be a part of that. It was really quite technical to, to, to get it to that perfect amount where, where you could capture everything and give Amazon and, and the producers what, what they wanted, but actually have more of an artistic film feel as well. It's we're doing our version of film, <laughs> of what film sees with a digital camera. And then you, because sometimes we would be like, okay, I can see the corner of the room and then you would never see that on film. Or we, so we would be like, okay, let's make it a little darker or same thing outside of the window, you know? By, you know, it looks completely blown out because we're on digital live. We, we, that would never happen on film. So why don't we just envy the windows? Because people are very still very used to seeing film. It, it just makes it feel very classic, you know, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to feel almost like a, a, a period uh, piece when it comes to just being shot on film. And I think we achieved it um, in a way that just helps the story, which was kind of the main objective, you know.